Hi, this is Leslie Ravenscroft. I'm lucky enough to be Senko at William Brooks School. This video is about how we support students who have social, emotional or mental health needs. The new code of practice that came into force on the 1st of September 2014 identifies four areas of need. This video is all about how we help people with social, emotional and mental health needs. It's really important that teachers know all about the children in front of them. We've made sure that when they open their register a column shows next to the child's name stating whether they have special educational needs. It shows T for teacher support, K for SEN support and S or ECHP for the highest levels of support provided through a statement. Individual teachers are expected to cross-reference this with the SEN list and the one-page profile. These have more detailed description of a student's needs. Let's look at this fictional SEN list. You can see at the top we have a support tutor for Year 7. Each year group has a, special, has a support tutor allocated to them. This means that staff know exactly whom to go to to liaise about special educational needs. On this list we have Fred. Fred has dyslexia. His reading and his spelling age aren't very good for a year 7 boy. Therefore he uses an iPad to record. He'll need a quiet room to go and dictate into his iPad and extra time to print things out. Frida has cerebral palsy. Her reading and spelling age are fine and nothing to do with her disability. However, she will get tired during PE. John Jones has dyscalculia, which is like dyslexia for maths. His reading and spelling age aren't too bad for a year 7 child and he's making progress currently. He may need exam concessions in the future in year 9, probably extra time to allow him time for his processing in maths. We also have to keep an eye on his number concepts. As part of looking at the SEN list, staff can also see exactly what provision have been made for that child so they can see if they've got spelling group or extra maths or social skills group or whatever they have. We adapt our curriculum and learning environment in several ways for students who have social, emotional and mental health. We provide a meet and greet for students who are anxious. This is when a teaching assistant can see that student before school and help them unpack any issues before the lessons begin. There could be one-to-one -one meetings with a counsellor. This is child-centred counselling, led by the child themselves and is very confidential. We can provide an anger management scheme or a sixth form mentor. Perhaps you need a key worker from the behaviour support base to keep in touch with you on a regular basis. We use a computer programme called PASS to measure students' um, attitudes to school in a variety of dimensions. This allows us to provide targeted interventions. Timetables may be temporarily reduced to release stress and pressure at critical times. A volcano card may be similarly given to students to allow them to choose to seek support in the behaviour support base. And we use the early help process to access um, child and adolescent mental health so that we can get diagnoses for our students. We want to develop the children's own social and emotional skills however. So BSR will mediate in student disagreements. Concerns about bullying should be reported initially to the form tutor or the behaviour support staff and will be followed up within 24 hours. Similarly, problems on the buses should be reported to behaviour support staff. There's a game club run at lunch times which fosters social skills in a supervised yet informal area. Behaviour support staff also run special social skills group. These include making and maintaining friendships. In the new code of practice, it says that schools should assess each pupil's current skills and levels of attainment on entry, building on information from previous settings and key stages where appropriate. Therefore, information from primary schools is seen as very important. But behaviour and social and emotional issues can 
be removed by the movement to secondary school. Contrastingly, sometimes the movement to secondary school can trigger new issues. So we have it in mind that we must always be very flexible. We also ask staff and parents to contact us if they feel something is preventing students reaching their potential and students can self-refer. We then liaise with primary mental health workers from CAMS to start the diagnostic process for conditions such as Autistic Spectrum Disorder, Attention Deficit Disorder, Tourette's or Obsessive Compulsive Disorder. We need to make sure that our support uh, provision is okay so that they're not getting too much or too little support. Part of this is looking at student progress. All tutors should be looking at all students' progress using a program called Four Matrix. You can see here that Aaron Armstrong, who doesn't exist, has a flight path that's pink and it's a little bit below the green flight path, which is his targets. If Aaron Armstrong did exist, at this point I would be looking to see why he was underachieving and what interventions we needed to put in place to help him reach his potential. We need to make sure that all students are included in mainstream lessons wherever possible. We do not operate a unit provision. There are other schools that offer such provision in our local area. All students are encouraged to attend the clubs at lunch times and if necessary teaching assistants will attend with them to help them settle in. Transport such as taxis can also be arranged for students with statements or ECHPs if they wish to stay after school. Differentiated auditions can also be arranged for students wishing to take part in the school productions. We've provided a significant amount of training for our staff we feel with, that we are well placed to deal with many of the issues that students come to school with. We also seek advice from a number of external agencies. We hope that you can discuss issues with myself and always come to a mutually satisfactory conclusion. However, in the event of a dispute that cannot be easily satisfied, please follow the link from our website to the school complaints procedure. There are organisations specifically to help parents make their way through the local offer and the school SEN information reports and all the other paperwork that results from the area of special educational needs. Parent Partnership is a brilliant service, they're truly independent and this page shows their web page and their telephone number. They exist specifically to support you as parents to get the best possible deal for your child. Thank you for listening.